Um, this is from Gutenberg Allergies again. I was sure that things far greater than mere literary journalism lay in store. I hold the camera on that disaffected young man, that bundle of spiky attitudes. I can read the pose, the telltale mannerisms. Indeed, I see it reproduced year after year in certain of the students I teach. I look out from the front of the room, note the hunched shoulders, the drifting gaze, the ever so slightly mocking inflection at the corners of the mouth. And though I should know better, I feel judged by it. That arrogance of youth, that narcissistic conviction that one's life will be better, more interesting than the lives of the defeated adults who populate the world. I remember it all so clearly. But while I can say that was me just 20 years ago, I still feel triggered. I want them to see me as an exception. I want them to approve of the choices I made. I want them to know, too, that those choices never present themselves as we, flush with omnipotence, imagine they will. Now, I've been the arrogant student, obviously, and maybe, you know, that's where I'm at. I don't know. I've had a certain number of failures, so I can begin to empathize with the feeling of the defeated adult. I guess what I want to ask you is whether you're still tempted to look at things through this framework, whether the joy of your work when it's going well has been the primary reward or whether other things have mattered more. <clears throat> you mean within the sphere of the literary, not whether family has mattered more or children, yes. but the other yes. stuff. I won't say that um, some of the other stuff didn't matter. I mean, one of the things that, and it was a consequence of, um, you know, writing and publishing and having a certain amount of good luck in that, but it did bring along in its way, I, I got to know, you know, a great many rather phenomenal people, you know, whether it was Joseph Brodsky or Seamus Heaney, or, I got to know these guys, you know, and it's like, I couldn't have, I wouldn't have, if I hadn't been in that sphere. But that's not the main thing. No, it really is, I guess, top of the list, or the star on it, is the sensation of genuinely being, being in the grip of something that you know as you're doing it is working and is good. I mean, to me, there's no better sensation when you just keep going and you know you're going to look back and you're not going to trash it, which is not always true. But, you know, sometimes those golden moments, those are great. Um, almost enough, but what drives them is ambition also. And part of the ambition is imagining people reading what you've written and responding and, you know, valuing you in a certain way. But, you know, it's like the old, well, if you could go back and choose something else, what would you choose? I think I'd, if I could go back and choose it at the time I was in, I would choose it. If somebody came up to me and I was 17 right now and they asked me, would I really want to choose the life of a writer? And if I thought the way I do now as a 60-something-year-old man... I would have to pause on that just because I think the place, the importance of it has not in any way shrunk. The place for it, I mean the private importance, the place for it in a public arena has.